Morning. All right. Go ahead and introduce yourself and okay. tell me tell me where we're at. Uh, my name's <laughs> here. There you go. My name's Alan Williams. Uh, we're here in St. James, Missouri, at the Vacuum Cleaning Museum. Uh, we got a factory above our heads that produces vacuums right here in the uh, United States. Uh, we pr produce the Recar and Simplicity brands. Okay. Um, Sounds good. Let's uh, let's start it out and see what we got. All right, right here we have the 1910s room. Uh, vacuum cleaners were actually started uh, pre-1900. Uh, some of the first vacuums were uh, billow operated, which is ones like this one. Okay. Uh, they started out as carpet sweepers, and then they added the billows for the suction, and then. Hoover actually started, uh, they were originally salad makers. They got the design from a uh, cousin-in-law and they were the first ones to kind of come up with the traditional vacuum you'd see today. Before they had actually added the beater bar, they were just straight suction devices. Um, a lot of the vacuums here were actually donated by Stan Can. He was a uh, organist for the Fox Theater. Interesting. Um, one of the biggest questions that, that we start out with is why vacuum cleaners have headlights and with that it's actually kind of simple before uh, vacuum cleaners were the were one of the first wired devices that you would have had in your house you they would screwed it into a fuse well you would actually screw it into a, a light socket okay so when you did that you had to remove the bulb well generally uh, houses only had one light bulb per room so whenever you did that, you darkened the room. Explorers, you hear that because of uh, headlights on vacuum cleaners, you had to have that because you unscrewed a light bulb and screwed the uh, vacuum cleaner in, so you were working in the dark till they put a headlight on. Yep. Pretty cool stuff right there. And they actually didn't even get the headlight until the next deck day. Okay. So, um, yeah. right here we have a vacuum from 1908. And... It still works. Wow. That's impressive. They don't build them like that anymore. Well, I mean, we actually do build a quality machine here, but, I mean, if one of our vacuums makes it to 100 years old, we're doing something right. There you go. You know. Um, and then... Yeah. Pretty well sums up this decade, looks uh, like. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you know, we got some... That were two man operations, and we got some of the central vacs back there in the corner. The central vacs would have been uh, the gray one there is for like a two story home, the green one's for a uh, single story. Okay. And uh, tell me about this uh, Stan Con right here. What, it, what exactly is that apparatus? Uh, Stan Can was the organist He for the Fox okay. Theater. Okay. He was actually a collector of vacuums, and he donated a lot of the vacuums you see in the museum. That's an interesting uh, looking vacuum cleaner. Uh, yeah, this would have been a two person apparatus. One person would have been back here uh, activating okay. the billows. And then you would have had another person using the wand. And then you can actually see the dirt you're pulling through. That would take a lot of work. That'd, that'd work your forearms and biceps and everything here, it looks like. Yep. Even got the vintage uh, lamps to go along with it. Yeah, everything is. Try to be spirit specific. This is really, really cool. I never imagined on my Route 66 journey I'd see a vacuum museum. Uh, as far as I know, this is the only one in the world. So, then we got James Earl Jones Bissell up there in the corner. Interesting. Period radio and rocking chair. Eureka. GE. Even some early Electrolux looking uh, vacuum cleaners there. They are Electrolux. Okay, well that's, that's a good reason they look like <laughs> Explorers. They are on Electrolux. Yeah, electric, oh. it was the first tank type vacuum cleaner. It was launched in 1924. Uh, it was imported from uh, Sweden. Uh, Hoover's patents expired on their motor driven brushes, which is the agitator right. on the bottom. Okay. Uh, so this way, this is where uh, you would start seeing the agitators being put on the other uh, 
brands. Interesting. Disposable bags are first used in the airway vacuum in 19 and 20 and were made of 14 layers of cellulose. Somebody asked me when, when, it was, when they were made, the first disposable bags, I thought it was the 30s, and it was 20s. I didn't go back far enough. Even got a, uh, a big paper clip looking thing on the top of that bag. Yeah, I think, well, with these bags, they would have actually just filled up the bag, and then once the bag was full, they would have actually unclipped it and then emptied the bag itself okay. before the disposable bags. Then in the 1930s, uh, we got the Great Depression. Forty percent of America was out of uh, was unemployed. Uh, vacuums were sold on weekly and by or monthly installments. Um, kind of, I mean, still some are still sold like that today. Uh, but none of the vacuum cleaner uh, companies actually went out of business during the Great Depression. Hello. <coughs> How you folks doing? Explorers, he's stepping off for just a second, but we'll keep looking here. Interesting. Old uh, Zenith Radio. We've seen a few of those along this journey. Old Electrolux, and Electrolux is one of the early ones that did the door-to-door uh, -door sales, and he bought all sorts of uh, gizmos and thingamabobs and attachments to make it do different things, including the massager head. My brother actually sold him for a short period of time. Old roll around style. There's a royal with the actual vacuum attachments. And the way you attached a lot of these attachments to these uprights was this little gizmo right here pulled out and you attached your hose to that. Very early small versions of vacuum cleaner. A period uh, Smith Corona typewriter. Now they're starting to look a little bit more streamlined here in this time frame. Little lady cleaning up high with her uh, Hoover with the side hose attachment. Man, just look at this uh, old uh, desk lamp and Emerson fan. No, oh, that's a cool fan. It's leather wrapped. Pretty cool. War bonds that was real popular back in the war days to help finance the war. Here we're moving back into a a little later area. It looks like we've got a, a few colors that are coming into play. We got a pink and a a, a blue vacuum cleaner. That's starting to look more like some of the uh, vacuum cleaners that I actually remember my mother having with the headlights. Here's a Kirby uh, hand butler, is what they called it. Had all sorts of attachments. You could add even uh, air freshener to your vacuum cleaner, as you see right there. Electrolux with all sorts of attachments, including a uh, sprayer that you could use if you wanted to, because the Electrolux has had a uh, outlet in the uh, front and a uh, inlet in the other uh, back, and one would suck and one would blow. Old uh, Eureka. Looks like an old-fashioned hair dryer, as a matter of fact. Really, really cool place here. As far as they're getting a first-hand view of the history of vacuum cleaners. You never imagine you'd see that on the uh, Route 66 journey. But this is a really, really, really um, cool area right here. All of this stuff works according to the uh, gentleman that was doing the tour before he got pulled away. Uh, look at this old General Electric mixer that's still in the box. Old iron Hoover coffee pot. This is actually a percolator. Historic Route 66 sign. Here's a um, old Magic Shelf uh, oven and stove. Westinghouse box fan back when they actually blew air versus what the new ones do. Here's a very early, early portable dishwasher. 
you loaded your dishes in the uh, top and in the bottom racks and closed the uh, door on top and turned her on and she normally got water and drained into your kitchen sink got an old Frigidaire refrigerator right here let me get you a good bird's eye view of this beauty well fall decoration on top and then as you see it still works everything is so cold inside of that and if you know just for safety reasons the government quit allowing refrigerators to have locking doors like this so you can't open it without pulling the handle that was for safety reasons because you ended up with uh, kids getting locked in refrigerators that'd be playing games and they couldn't get out and they would actually uh, uh, not do too well here's uh, some more different styles that we're moving into they're starting to be a little bit more uh, modern looking in this this era sweeping America by airway sanitizer vacuum cleaner to actually sanitize the air as it was vacuuming vibrabeat cleaning action actually vibrated the beater bar to uh, shake the uh, dirt up into the vacuum system oh here we got a plethora of rainbow colored uh, vacuum cleaners here little small portable ones all the way to a period lamp central back system and just look at that we got greens we got blues we've got pinks we've got more high high green and low greens and even a purple vacuum cleaner everybody could have their own custom match to whatever color they wanted RCA Whirlpool combines both cleaners in one just look at this this is a beautiful museum very well done got some of these uh, newer styles here watermatic to filter your uh, your vacuum through water and that way it didn't get the dust in the air this old period uh, uh, General Electric television I wonder if it still works just look at that how pristine and in good shape that thing still is explorers that's probably a 1960s black and white there would have been several hundred dollars in the uh, day all the way to Sunbeam Ferrex or Fairfax Sears Kenmore I remember those here's some rainbow uh, actual uh, shampooer carpet shampooer Electrolux uh, floor buffers old Zenith radio mixed into the vacuums and explores a very bright purple pillow old 8 track uh, four channel stereo system here and look at that flow that chair now we're getting into uh, Brady Bunch days I can see it now Alice using one of these vacuum cleaners to clean up the Brady house look at that lady how happy she looks to be using her vacuum cleaner and them bell bottoms <coughs> another fantastic selection here as we all uh, pan around really really cool now we're starting to move into a newer era of vacuum cleaners there's an Electrolux uh, one of the robotical style Hoover, newer style Hoover, newer style Electrolux, Kirby Heritage. <coughs> Housekeeper. First name in vacuums at last according to this.
and this company is uh, Taconi Manufacturing and they have done several different vacuum cleaners looks like a patriotic one one for the presidential seal there for the president Simplicities Maytags Route 66 vacuum cleaner <coughs> moving up even more of modern pretty lime green in there and now we're into what I'm assuming is the factory outlet and just look at all the incarnations of vacuum cleaners that we have now Really, really awesome. Ones have been factory, uh, they're being factory clean and serviced and everything. Demonstration carpet area. Really some cool colors here. Cordless vacuums and blues, purples. Patriotic and there's a plain old fashioned bright red one. But we're going to step back to the early 1900s in vacuum cleaners here. We're going to end this video. It's been an amazing uh, little stop here off of the Route 66 journey. And welcome to the 1910s and the 1912, the Titanic sinks. 1917 World War One begins and 1913 Henry Ford's assembly line started and you can go all the way around to different uh, eras of time here and for instance prohibition began in 1920 Great Depression continues from the 1930s Hindenburg crashed in 1937 <clears throat> all the way to the roaring 1950s, the Korean War 1950, Color TV came out in 1951. How y'all doing? Good, how are you? Good. And in the 60s, we had JFK was assassinated. Neil Armstrong walked on the moon in 69. The 70s, Atari launches Pong. Apple introduces the first computer in 1976. In the 1980s, MTV came out. Uh, the Berlin Wall fell in 89. The Challenger tragedy in 1986. So a lot of milestones through these times. But anyway, we're going to cut it off here, Explorers. Everybody have a great day. And once again, thanks for spending a few minutes with me here at the Vacuum Cleaner Museum. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.